That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I feel like we have crushed our buy low running back video every single week. And we're going to continue to go through it every single week. We're going to look at the previous week's performance as well as we'll go a little bit deeper. We'll talk about some running backs that I think the opportunity doesn't necessarily line up with the current fantasy production that we have had. I think that we have a better weeks coming forward and you can buy at a discount right now for reasons X, Y, and Z. And of course, we will be going talking about some players at the very top, some studs. And later on in the video, we'll be talking about some players that are a little bit more depth add-on so make sure you stick around for the entire video so you get the full range of players but of course before we get into it we have to go through and give away some fantasy flock network hats y'all know we give away fantasy flock network hats every single video for people that are subscribed to the channel that drop a like leave a comment just because i'm doing everything that i can to get back to y'all i really appreciate everybody supporting the channel and our first winner coming out from i am Beatrice says this guy has some serious dedication with so many streams and uploads yes if you don't know we live stream literally every single night we live stream every single night and i've not missed a day of live streaming in over a hundred days if you're not subscribed to the channel and hitting the bell next to the subscribe button have no idea what you're doing now our next comment going to come out from isaiah power who says need 12 points from tyler bass tomorrow night for the win good luck my friend hoping that tyler bass comes through and pulls through for you and of course if you win that fantasy vlog network ad just send me that email asap with your physical address so i can get that out to you check the description of the video and yeah i think that should be it let's go through and let's look at some of these buy low running backs and let's start it off with a running back that had a decent week this past week in Josh Jacobs, but I know a lot of people are going to be coming out. They're going to see that production you've had from Kenyon Drake, where you're looking at Kenyon Drake this past week. And yeah, I mean, Drake put up a considerable amount of points. I mean, right now, if you're looking at it, he actually finished as the running back nine. He had more fantasy points than Josh Jacobs in this offense. And I know that you can maybe see some people here getting a little concerned. I mean, oh, maybe this is what we have with Las Vegas going forward with no John Gruden here. Maybe they're going to start using Kenyon Drake as more of the goal line role running back, which I will say that's definitely in the range of outcomes. But for us to naturally assume that all of a sudden Kenyon Drake is this running back that you want in Las Vegas, it's just so bold to come out here and try to say that. And while, yes, Kenyon Drake walks away with both a receiving touchdown as well as a rushing touchdown, at the end of the day, he had six touches in this backfield. I mean, he had six touches on 11 snaps. He played 11 snaps this week out of the potential 55 available to the running back position. You actually had Josh Jacobs playing 36 snaps, more than triple the amount of snaps that you had from Kenyon Drake. Now, I will say there's one bad thing that we saw from Josh Jacobs this past week, and it's the fact that you did not get the same level of usage in the receiving game that we had the two weeks prior, where if you look at week four, if you look at week five with what we had from Josh Jacobs, this was a running back in each contest averaging five targets a game. Of course, I mean, you love to see that usage. Maybe it was just a dream to continue to try to expect that we are going to get that level of involvement from Josh Jacobs in the passing department, knowing that, I mean, historically, that's not been something that we can expect with Josh Jacobs, knowing historically, this is a running back really only seeing that usage in the rushing game. But what's really weird is that with Josh Jacobs, this is a running back that had more red zone rushes, more red zone touches than any other player in the NFL last season. And it wasn't even that close. I mean, if you're looking at Josh Jacobs and you're assuming that the running back position here is going to be scoring three touchdowns for the Las Vegas Raiders, you'd assume that Josh Jacobs is at least getting two out of the three there. Now, Jacobs does come away with the rushing touchdown in his own right. He has 16 carries. He has 53 rushing yards. Only one reception at the same time. Hopefully we get some better usage for Josh Jacobs this next week. Now they are going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. I know that, I mean, they're not the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but the Buccaneers just a boat race the Eagles this past week. And at the same time, Leonard Fournette was actually the running back one overall. Of course, that makes you want to be really excited with what we will have from Josh Jacobs. After that, they get the Giants, the Chiefs, the Bengals, the Cowboys, Washington, the Chiefs, the Browns. I, I'm really not worried about any of these matchups until we get to week 15. I think that with Josh Jacobs, the matchups are pretty good going forward. 
And at the same time, I mean, you probably are going to be expecting that if he's going to continue to see this level of involvement just with the raw amount of touches, that the fantasy production will be going in the direction of Josh Jacobs, not Kenyon Drake. I promise you that. Now, our next running back, I have to admit, you are not buying him low. It's the exact opposite. You are buying him high. We are going to have to include him yet again on another quote unquote buy low running back video. This is more so just based on the fact that I think he is a fantastic trade target, regardless of if you're a six and O roster, regardless of if you are currently one in five, the production now should be elite as well as the production over the coming months. Daryl Henderson with Henderson. I know that I mean, you had a considerable amount of carries for Sony Michelle over the past few weeks in Los Angeles. I mean, if you're going to be looking at what we have actually had from Sony Michelle, right now he's the running back 54 on the season. I mean, if you're looking at his total carries, he's had 54 carries through the first six weeks. So he's averaging nine carries a game. Now, I will say we have to look at this with a little bit of a different context, given the fact that A, this past week with Sony Michelle in this game with the New York Giants, it was. A massive blowout here where this game was never close to begin with. So if Sony Michelle's coming out, he's seeing nine carries in this offense. We don't really need to be concerned about that whatsoever just because, I mean, Daryl Henderson had already gotten his production at that point. Daryl Henderson had already had 20 plus carries in this game. He already had three targets out of the backfield. Now, Henderson, if you're looking at just the raw number of snaps, Henderson played 54 out of 66 snaps in this offense. He was in there essentially on every passing down. He was in there in 29 out of the potential 34 dropbacks. He actually ran a route on. He actually ran only two less routes than Cooper Cup in this offense at the same time. He's a running back that's getting a great usage in the receiving game. He's getting used as an every down workhorse running back. And we need to continue to hammer in the fact that with Daryl Henderson here playing on the Los Angeles Rams, this is going to be one of the most productive offenses in the entire NFL. So if he is a three down running back and one of the most productive offenses in the NFL, we are going to do everything that we can to try to buy low based on the idea that yes, he's the running back 12 right now in fantasy, but there have been a multitude of weeks that he has been dealing with injuries. I mean, he was dealing with an injury in week three when he didn't even play against the Buccaneers. I mean, he was dealing with injuries in weeks four and five as well. So the raw number of snaps and as well, touches in this offense, they look a little bit off, but when he has been healthy, this is someone that's produced every single week. I mean, literally his lowest week so far with his fantasy production was 15.7 points in week one against the Chicago bears. Since then you have 17, 16, 17, 24. I, I mean, he has been one of the most consistent running backs in the NFL. This next week, he has the Detroit lions, which obviously Joe Mixon just crushed the lions. Then he has the Houston Texans. We just saw what Jonathan Taylor did to the Houston Texans. Also, he has the Tennessee Titans after that. Not worried about any of these matchups really at all. I think Daryl Henderson, by the time we get to the end of this month, most people will be viewing him as a mid running back one. And we are continuously saying in every single live stream that we had this week, buy Henderson, buy Henderson, buy Henderson, because you could trade for him at a running back two price tag. I think right now people really haven't understood the floor and ceiling combination that you have for a bell cow running back. One of the most productive offenses in the NFL go through, try to trade for Daryl Henderson with really any way you can. Now our next running back, someone that was on a sell high video for us a few weeks ago, because we were looking at his matchup saying he was a hundred percent going to be losing value and that value was lost. Now I think it's time for us to slide in with miles Sanders. Now here with Miles Sanders, you are not paying a very high price tag for him. Of course you cannot go out and you cannot say, okay, oh, Miles Sanders, let's go. Let's trade Ezekiel Elliott. We'll get Miles Sanders and Cortland Sutton. No, that, that would be a horrendous trade. Rather you're looking at Miles Sanders and you're saying, while the ceiling's probably a little bit lower than you would like, at least we're going to have a pretty high floor. Now I will say that yes, this has been a running back that so far has only had over 10 fantasy points, two weeks so far this season. That is atrocious. Now, keep in mind, this is someone that we were saying to sell after week three, whenever you saw that Kenneth Gainwell was going to have the receiving down usage. And if we were projecting out over the next three weeks, I mean, we talked about this at length, 
that he was going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. We were projecting that to be a game where the Chiefs got an early lead and Miles Sanders was just not in the game plan at all. That's exactly what happened. Then he was going up against the Carolina Panthers in week five, one of the toughest run defenses in the entire NFL. Then he was going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in week six, the toughest run defense in the entire NFL. So now if we're looking at the upcoming schedule, he has the Raiders, the Lions, the Chargers, the Broncos, the Saints, the Giants, the Jets. I mean, not the best matchups by any means, but at least they're considerably better than what we've had over the past three weeks. And if you're also looking at Kenneth Gainwell, Gainwell was a running back that, I mean, you would assume that in a contest where the Philadelphia Eagles got boat raced by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that Gainwell would have had just an absurd amount of targets in this offense, given that you would assume that this coaching staff does want to be using him as the third down running back. However, he actually only gets two targets out of the backfield here, and he had zero carries at the same time. In the fourth quarter, whenever they were going through and they were playing the two-minute drill, Miles Sanders was the running back that was on the football field, not Kenneth Gainwell. So I think that we're probably going to be buying low on Sanders. Keep in mind, yes, I know that some people are going to be annoyed that we're calling him a sell high than a buy low, but I mean, that's kind of the way fantasy football works. And like I said, you're not paying a very high price tag for him. You're just trying to pick him up for... I don't want to say free, but if you can make a pivot at wide receiver, like say you can go through and you could trade CD lamb for Calvin Ridley and Miles Sanders. I think that'd be a perfect trade. Now our next trade target going to be a running back. That was a very disappointing this past week, but keep in mind, this is someone that I mean, was pretty much a game time decision in injured leading up all the way until kickoff with chase Edmonds against the Cleveland Browns. Okay. So a few things that we have to look at with chase Edmonds here, a James Conner had more snaps. James Conner played 41 snaps compared to Chase Edmonds, 28. Now, if you're looking at James Conner, I will also admit the fact that he was very impressive in this game. We also ran 11 routes out of this backfield. This is something I want to monitor for James Conner because if all of a sudden he takes over as the receiving down running back in Arizona, this would be a running back that would have a running back one level upside. I mean, there's no reason to expect that happening right now because with Chase Edmonds here, you just have to look at it and say the game flow wasn't the best for Edmonds in that the Cardinals literally 6-0 and right now. This is a team that is surging. They dominated the Cleveland Browns. They won 37-14. to So you know that Chase Edmonds, he's going to be a running back that, I mean, you really like in those contests where the Cardinals are being forced to throw the ball because he is that passing down running back and one of the most efficient offenses in the NFL. And if you're going to be comparing him to James Conner, I know Conner has been a more exciting running back with just the touchdown volume he has had in this offense. Now, that being said, while James Conner, yes, I mean, he had a duration with three weeks leading into this game where he had five touchdowns in three weeks. We knew that was unsustainable. We knew that James Conner was a player that we were wanting to avoid because of that. And he was just playing way above his head. With all that being said, James Conner is still a mid running back three on a points per game basis, where Chase Edmonds is that low end running back two. And if you're going to be looking at just what we should be expecting from Chase Edmonds going forward, if this will be a healthy running back in one of the most productive offenses in the NFL, he should go back to seeing the majority of snaps played, assuming that the Cardinals aren't blowing out every single team by 23 points. And then at the same time, I mean, you should at least at least get some touchdowns going in the direction of Chase Edmonds. Now, I'm not saying a lot, given the fact that, I mean, James Conner clearly does have that goal line role. Nobody's going to be taking that away from James Conner. And also, that goal line role doesn't mean much, knowing that Kyler Murray can also vulture those rushing touchdowns at the goal line at the same time. But with that being said, you've had almost 80 touches so far for Chase Edmonds so far this season. I mean, just with receptions alone, he's had 26 through six weeks. This should be a player that is going to begin to see the change in his touchdown score going forward. I would be really surprised if we see the touchdown rate just stay at an all-time low for Chase Edmonds, knowing that with how efficient this offense is, the opposing defenses really have to be taken into account. Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, I mean, A.J. Green, Christian Kirk, Rondell Moore for Chase Edmonds not to be scoring touchdowns at a high rate, at least with his targets out of the backfield. Obviously the carries, he's not getting the carries in the area of the football field that would convert over to touchdowns. 
I'd imagine that we get some big plays coming soon from Chase, Chase Edmonds. We've literally seen it before. We saw it last year. Now our next running back will be someone that's embarrassing to bring up because I'm not going to lie. I had him ranked as the running back one, the running back one coming into the week. Austin Eckler and Austin Eckler comes out, fails miserably. He had six carries in this contest, six carries for seven rushing yards. Now, with that being said, he almost gets the 10 fantasy points regardless because he has seven targets out of the backfield. He has four receptions, 48 receiving yards. Now, the problem is you just have this offense imploding for the Los Angeles Chargers, where clearly Mike Williams was not healthy. Mike Williams comes out. He sees two receptions, 27 receiving yards. And I'm just going to look at this game and I'm going to say, well, clearly Mike Williams just changes the entire way this Los Angeles Chargers offense functions. And that if you're looking at the Chargers so far, this has been a team that, I mean, you should not be expecting them to ever not go a week without scoring a touchdown. I mean, they actually scored 20 points week one against Washington, 17 points week two against Dallas. I know not that great, but then 30 points against the Chargers, 28 points against the Raiders, 47 points against the Browns. This is just an off week from Los Angeles. I mean, if you're going back to what we had with Austin Eckler coming into the week, this was the running back two on a points per game basis based on the fact that he is seeing an incredible amount of touchdowns in this offense, just with how efficient the offense is overall. And to go along with it, the usage in the receiving game is there where this is actually someone that through the span of the past five weeks has actually averaged over five receptions a game. That's a mark that not a lot of wide receivers are getting to. So Austin Eckler, he's still a top five running back for me rest of season. I think we want to be going through and trying to get him everywhere we can. So it sucks to see this down performance in a matchup that I thought we were going to see a very high scoring game between the Ravens and the Chargers based on that Colts performance this past week. But yeah, I think that we just kind of go, okay, well, Mike Williams will be healthier a week from now. The overall offense will get right. And yes, it's a tough matchup against the New England Patriots, but we just saw Dallas go out there and put up a considerable amount of points. Now our next running back, I, I know a lot of people are going to be rolling their eyes at this because we actually said to buy him low, I believe two weeks ago, we called him a buy low running back, but we're going right back to the well, Javante Williams. Now with Javante Williams, this is a running back that still split this backfield 50-50 with Melvin Gordon, where if you're looking at the touches in this offense, I mean, Javante Williams, 11 carries, Melvin Gordon, 10. I mean, Javante Williams, three targets, Melvin Gordon, three. I mean, pretty much identical with what you're getting here. Now, I will say with that being said, I mean, you actually had this not being the best game flow for the Denver Broncos, given the four turnovers that you had from Teddy Bridgewater and that they were trailing, I mean, pretty much all of this game. I know that they put up 14 points in the fourth quarter, but that was pretty much just pure garbage time. Now, with Javante Williams, I think that what we are going to end up seeing is exactly what we projected coming into the season. Now, the issue is whenever we are looking at Javante Williams and all of a sudden this was a running back that was getting a 50% split in these backfield touches in weeks one, two, and three, I was like, oh crap, do we have to change our mind on Javante? Because he was a running back that I was fine with drafting in drafts this year going, okay, well, by the time we get to the fantasy football playoffs, I mean, he can take over as the three down running back in Denver. He can be the 2019 version of Miles Sanders. He can be the 2020 version of Jonathan Taylor, where you have that running back drafted in the second round that, I mean, has the three down profile that shows flashes at the beginning of the season, but doesn't take over as that elite bell cow until the end of the year. I know with Javante Williams, it's frustrating that it has not happened until now. But keep in mind, we were not expecting it to happen with Javante Williams anyway until we got to week eight, week nine. So I know it's kind of like a tease that we're actually going to get 50% of Javante Williams to start the year rather than him starting at like 20% and then just slowly ramping his way up. But maybe that's not how it's going to work with Javante. And also, I mean, it goes without being said that it's not even like the coaching staff has to decide to use Javante Williams more. I mean, there are multiple ways that he can get there. A, Jerry Judy may come back and may make this offense just that much more exciting where there are more red zone opportunities for Javante Williams. B, you could have the coaching staff go, okay, well, Javante clearly has more juice. I mean, Javante Williams, especially if you're just looking at what he's giving you compared to Melvin Gordon, it seems like his efficiency is a little bit higher every single week at the same time. 
or C. You could see Melvin Gordon, a running back that was drafted a very long time ago. Let me look up how old Melvin Gordon is here. I mean, this is someone that was drafted in the same class as Todd Gurley. Yeah, he's 28 years old. You can see a 28-year-old running back that's had an insane workload over his NFL career so far. I mean, possibly suffer hamstring train. Then all of a sudden, Javante Williams takes over this bell cow. He doesn't give that job back. So Javante, I mean, this next week, it probably won't happen. But if you're going to be looking at the matchup here that you have from the Denver Broncos, I mean, they have the Browns week seven. Don't love it. But then they have Washington, Dallas, Philly. Love those next three weeks. I think you could easily see the breakout for Javante in one of those. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I really hope y'all got something from it. Make sure you go down there, drop that like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a ton. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. Hope I see y'all with the live stream tonight or the video tomorrow morning.